Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today we'll be talking about something that have divided the pilot group into two, something that's very divisive. We're going to talk about the pilot hat, where it came from, where it is today and why we see it kind of disappearing. So stay tuned. One, three, one, zero, one, six, everyone right, right, on Third one, three, one, right. Right guys, so the pilot hat has been with us basically from the dawn of aviation. So even the Wright brothers, when they started flying their first flyer, uh, they were wearing hats. Now, that was more because men wore hats back in those days, so of course they were going to wear it. But they quite quickly realized that the hat wasn't very aerodynamic and had a tendency to blow off as they were flying. So very quickly after they had you know, done the first couple of flights, they actually did put on hats that were more suited for it, that was more kind of stuck to the head and protecting the ears. And those kind of hats, they were then worn later on when the, um, the aircraft became more and more used in warfare. So we started seeing them in the First World War, where uh, fighter pilots were sitting in these open cockpits, were wearing hats that was, you know, these characteristics kind of um, um, hats made out of leather and that was covering the ears and with the pilot googles. And because pilots were seen as heroes during both the First and the Second World War, those kind of hats then became fashion icons, so you could see them being worn out in the public as well. Um, as the aircraft started developing and we started seeing the covered cockpits coming in into um, fighter aircraft as well, the, um, the, the hats were still being worn. So just as an example, uh, when Charles Lindbergh flew over the Atlantic, um, he flew in a covered cockpit, but he was still wearing his characteristic pilot hat and when he landed um, and the crowds kind of greeted him after his historic flight uh, his hat was actually stolen by the by the crowds but it was managed you know they managed to find it managed to bring it back to him but he then eventually lost his hat again when he was doing aerobatics over Paris so if if you have found a kind of worn out pilot hat somewhere in Paris from that period it might well be Charles Lindbergh's hat that you've found. Anyway, um, the fighter pilots tended to be officers and part of their official officer uniform was this big kind of wide hat, the ones that you kind of associate with, uh, with maybe Russian military at the moment. Those wide hats were worn up, you know, they were kind of uh, kept up in that distinctive shape by um, a mesh, like a metal mesh inside. Now, these uh, pilots, the officers, they wanted to wear their hats even in the cockpit. But since they started getting headsets, since they started to become radio communication involved, uh, they quickly realized that that metal mesh instead of a hat kind of stopped them from, from wearing the headset. So some of them started to take that metal mesh out of it and put the headset on top of their officer's hat. And that's where the crushed hat uniform item came from. So basically what you started seeing, um, you know, from the Second World War going up uh, was these hats that looked terrible. They looked completely crushed. And the fact is that the more crushed they looked, the, the higher rank the, uh, the officer normally had. So the, the worse your hat looked, the more crushed it was, the more um, you were looked up to by your flying colleagues, uh, the more respect it kind of gained and you can see these type of hats for example in the, uh, the you know the movie that was released a few years back about Pearl Harbor um, you can see that the, the main characters there their hats were of the crushed hat type so that's where that came from but if we go back to the the civilian market which is what I'm talking about and the hats first started appearing back in about 1931 when Pan American Airlines um, were starting to fly flying boats. So prior to that, the civilian pilots were kind of fitted out like Second World War pilots with, and First World War pilots, I should say, with leather jackets, cocky pants, and the characteristic kind of uh, leather hat. But when the flying boats came around, 
Well, then uh, Pan American Airlines thought, mm, these things are big. People don't know, really understand flying let, yet. Let's, let's try to calm the flying public down by outfitting our pilots with uniforms that look like naval uniforms. Because yeah, they're kind of boats anyway. I've talked much more about this in an episode I did about the pilot uniform, the whole pilot uniform, which you can check out here later on. So that's where the pilot, the kind of double-breasted um, uniform came from. Dark, white hat, which was more or less identical to naval uniforms of the time. The hat then went from there. Uh, it went from being white to more, you know, colored the same as the rest of the uniform, so dark navy blue or, or black. Um, but the fact is that the white pilot hats have actually started to come back. So for example, in Qantas uniforms, they have gone back to white hats. And that is kind of to pay homage to their roots uh, back in the old naval days. So what do pilots think about hats then? Well, here is where the pilot group is firmly divided into two different groups. The first group are the ones that don't really like wearing the hat. It is just one more uniform thing to remember to take with you. You tend to forget it everywhere. You forget it in the cockpit or you forget it at home or in a hotel room. And um, it, it's just one more thing that you have to put on top of your flight bag when you're in the cockpit. Now I've actually shown that there are, um, there are actual hooks still uh, installed in the 737 cockpit, which is there exactly for the hats. But so that group doesn't really like it. They would love for it to disappear. And the fact is that a lot of airlines, the low fare airlines in Europe, I think Southwest Airlines as well, have um, removed the hat completely from its, um, from its uniform or they have put it in as a voluntary item. As in you can wear it if you want, but you don't have to wear it. But then you have the other pilot group. And the other pilot group, which I kind of um, am part of, realizes that the traveling public, they associate the picture of a pilot with the uniform and the hat. There's a lot of people out there who, who want to see a pilot looking in a specific way. And the hat is a very, very significant part of that. It inspires trust in the, in the pilots. It kind of radiates um, professionalism. It radiates confidence and competence. And having the, that hat on, will actually have a positive effect on especially nervous flyers. They see the uniform, they see the pilot and they think, oh, that's a person that I can put my trust in. And if it does that, if it just does that by a little, I think that it's worth to have a hat in order to, to kind of calm things down and also that it gives a more professional picture, both of the, the pilot occupation as such, but also of the airline that we're flying for. So even though I think that you know, it probably is a little bit of a pain to remember to carry it with you and to put it somewhere in the cockpit. I do think that the positives outweigh the negatives when it comes to wearing the hat. Um, for the future, um, I, I think that the hat will disappear more and more, unfortunately, as the, the, uh, the pilot's occupation becomes more streamlined. It's more about doing quick 25-minute turnarounds, getting quickly there and back. Um, and the, the, like the role of the uniform is it's, it's not disappearing, but it's being a little bit devaluated. But I think that it is crucial for the occupation and for the traveling public that we still keep it. And if you are in uniform, if you are a flyer out there and you're watching this, make sure that your uniform looks up to standard, okay? Uh, just as much as a well-maintained uniform will inspire trust in you, a poorly maintained uniform will do the, ex the complete opposite. So if you do wear a uniform, wear it with pride. If, it's, if the hat is part of it, make sure that it looks the part, okay? Now, what do you think about this? This is what I'm interested in. First of all, I hope that if you want these kind of videos, you like this kind of content, that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. Now, the, the little notification bell is very, very important because from time to time, like this week, for example, I do special videos like about the bankruptcy of, uh, of Thomas Cook and what that means for everybody. And when I do that, if you haven't tagged 
that little um, bell, you won't know about it. It won't come up in your feed. So make sure that you have both subscribed and you tick the bell. And now I want you to tell me what you think about the pilot hat. Is it a positive thing? Is it a negative thing? And remember to motivate why you think it's that way. Go in here, put it in as a comment below, or even better, download the free Mentor Aviation app, get yourself a, uh, a, you know, a nickname in the app and make yourself a profile, come into the chat and tag at mentor. That way I will get a message onto my phone and I can participate in that discussion with you as well as many other professional pilots, pilots in training and aviation enthusiasts. So see you inside of the app. Let's have a positive and constructive discussion about the pilot hats, okay? Have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Right guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then, check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye. So that means that I am going to the Raider 245, which is the last Raider to fly. And this thing is 157 is set to get to my side. Then the next step the R that we're going to use is Chevre uh, up here. So that's 13.2. 13.2 is set then on the standby and on the standby of my co-pilot as well. Then my co-pilot is going to 